This lesson 9 contains question number 14 to question number 26 of Mathematics University Entrance Examination of the year 2011 Ethiopian calendar. Question number 14. If A is a 3 by 3 matrix and determinant of A is equal to 5, then what is the determinant of 2 times A transport times A? It's pretty simple to solve this problem if you are familiar with these two formulas. The first formula. Determinant of A is equal to determinant of A transpose, which is given as 5. Second formula, for any 3 by 3 matrix, determinant of a constant K times A transpose times A is equal to that constant K, the power of one of the orders, that is 3, times determinant of A transpose times determinant of A. Determinant of 2 times A transpose times A is equal to 2 to the power of 3 times determinant of A transpose times determinant of A, which is equal to, to the power of 3 is 8, times determinant of A transpose is 5, times determinant of A is 5. 8 times 5 is 40, 40 times 5 is 200, so choice C is the correct answer. Question number 15, which one of the following is a multiplicative inverse of Z is equal to 3 plus 4i divided by 4 minus 5i? Multiplicative inverse is equal to 1 over Z, which is equal to, 1 over 3 plus 4i divided by 4 minus 5i, which is equal to 1 times the inverse of the denominator, that's 4 minus 5i divided by 3 plus 4i. Multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate of the denominator in order to simplify the whole fraction. The sign in front of the imaginary part at the denominator is positive, hence the opposite sign is negative. So the conjugate of 3 plus 4i is 3 minus 4i. Let's multiply both the denominator and the denominator by 3 minus 4i. 4 times 3 is 12. 4 times negative 4i is negative 16i. Negative 5i times 3 is negative 15i. Negative 5i times negative 4i is positive 20i squared. Divided by 3 plus 4i times 3 minus 4i means the square of the difference between the two numbers. That's 3 squared, which is equal to 9, minus 4i squared. That's 16i squared, which is equal to 12, minus 16i minus 15i is minus 31i, plus 20 times i squared is negative 1, divided by 9 minus 16 times i squared is again negative 1, which is equal to 20 times negative 1 is negative 20, plus 12 is negative 8, minus 31i, divided by 9 minus 16 times negative 1 is positive 16, 9 plus positive 16 is 25. Let's split this fraction. We will find 8 minus negative 31i divided by 25 is equal to minus 8 over 25 minus 31 over 25i. Thus, the correct answer is choice A. Question number 16. What is the value of limit 8 times 1 over 2 plus h the whole square minus 8 times 1 over 2 square divided by h as h approaches to 0? Limit. 8 times 1 over 2 plus h the whole square minus 8 times 1 over 2 square divided by h as h approaches to 0 is equal to the limit of 8 times the square of 1 over 2 plus h is 1 over 2 square plus 2 times 1 over 2 times h plus h square minus 8 times 1 over 2 the whole square divided by h, h approaches to 0 which is equal to this 8 outside the bracket, multiply all the stuffs inside the bracket, thus limit 8 times 1 over 2 square is 8 times 1 over 2 square. 2 cross out by 2, we left with 1h, 1h times 8 is 8h, plus 8 times h square is h h square, minus 8 times 1 over 2 the whole square, divided by h, which is equal to 8 times 1 over 2 square, minus 8 times 1 over 2 square is 0, so we left with 8h plus 8h squared divided by h as h approaches to 0, which is equal to h is a common factor, so h, 8h divided by h is 8 plus 8h squared divided by h is 8h, the whole over h as h approaches to 0. h cross out by h, thus we left with limit 8 plus 8h as h approaches to 0. Now we can substitute 0 to h because the function is defined at h is equal to 0. So, limit of 8 plus 8h as h approaches to 0 is equal to 8 plus 8 times 0. 8 times 0 is 0. 0 plus 8 is 8. Choice B is the right alternative. Question number 17. 
What is the value of limit 3 to the power of n plus 2 to the power of n divided by 6 to the power of n as n approaches to infinity? Limit 3 to the power of n plus 2 to the power of n divided by 6 to the power of n as n approaches to infinity is equal to. Let's split the expression inside the bracket. That's limit 3 to the power of n divided by 6 to the power of n plus 2 to the power of n divided by 6 to the power of n as n approaches to infinity, which is equal to limit 3 to the power of n divided by 6 to the power of n is 3 over 6 the whole power of n plus 2 to the power of n divided by 6 to the power of n is 2 over 6 the whole power of n as n approaches to infinity, which is equal to limit 3 over 6 means 1 over 2 to the power of n plus 2 over 6 means 1 over 3, the whole power of n, as n approaches to infinity. The additional rule of limit permit us to write this limit as limit 1 over 2 to the power of n as n approaches to infinity, plus limit 1 over 3 to the power of n as n approaches to infinity, which is equal to 1 over 2 is a fraction with a denominator greater than the numerator. So, as n approaches to very big number, the limit of 1 over 2 approaches to 0. Again, 1 over 3 is a fraction with a denominator greater than the numerator. So as n approaches to a very big number, the limit of 1 over 3 to the power of n approaches to 0. 0 plus 0 is equal to 0. Choice C is the correct answer. Question number 18. What is the greatest lower bound of a sequence? Negative 1 to the power of n times 1 over n plus 1 as n ranges from 0 up to infinity. Let's see some of the terms in order to figure out the pattern. If n is equal to 0, then negative 1 to the power of n times 1 over n plus 1 is equal to negative 1 to the power of 0 times 1 over 0 plus 1, which is equal to negative 1 to the power of 0 is 1 times 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 divided by 1 is 1, 1 times 1 is equal to 1. If n is equal to 1, then negative 1 to the power of n times 1 over n plus 1 is equal to negative 1 to the power of 1 times 1 over 1 plus 1, which is equal to Negative 1 to the power of 1 is negative 1 times 1 plus 1 is 2. 1 divided by 2 is 1 over 2, which is equal to negative 1 times 1 over 2 is negative 1 over 2. Be mindful, CLEC is not only an exam of knowledge, but also an exam of time. So you have to be wise in managing time. In order to save time, you can stop finding the terms of the sequence at this stage. And you can replace that negative 1 over 2 is the greatest lower bound because n is at the power of this first expression. So, the output is negative 1 when n is odd. At this second expression, n is at the denominator. As n goes to a very big number, the output closer to 0. That is, all the negative outputs lie between negative 1 over 2 and 0. Hence, negative 1 over 2 and numbers less than negative 1 over 2 are lower bounds, and 1 over 2 is the greatest of them. But for clarity of this discussion, let's add some more terms. If n is equal to 2, then negative 1 to the power of n times 1 over n plus 1 is equal to negative 1 squared times 1 over 2 plus 1. Negative 1 squared is 1 times 2 plus 1 is 3. 1 divided by 3 is 1 over 3, which is equal to 1 times 1 over 3 is 1 over 3. If n is equal to 3, then negative 1 to the power of n times 1 over n plus 1 is equal to negative 1 cubed times 1 over 3 plus 1. Negative 1 cubed is 1 times 3 plus 1 is 4, 1 divided by 4 is 1 over 4, which is equal to negative 1 over 4. If n is equal to 24, then negative 1 to the power of n times 1 over n plus 1 is equal to negative 1 to the power of 24 times 1 divided by 24 plus 1. 24 plus 1 is 25. 1 divided by 25 is 1 over 25. 1 times 1 over 25 is 1 over 25. If n is equal to 99, then Negative 1 to the power of n times 1 over n plus 1 is equal to negative 1 to the power of 99 times 1 over 99 plus 1. Negative 1 to the power of 99 is negative 1. 99 plus 1 is 100. 1 divided by 100 is 1 over 100, which is equal to negative 1 times 1 over 100 is negative 1 over 100. The output is negative for all odd values of n and positive for all even values and 0. Negative 1 over 2 is the smallest and 1 is the greatest of all the outputs and hence the sequence is bounded between negative 1 over 2 and 1. That's negative 1 over 2 less than or equal to the sequence. Negative 1 to the power of n times 1 over n plus 1, which is less than or equal to 1. Negative 1 over 2 and numbers less than negative 1 over 2 are lower bounds. And negative 1 over 2 is the greatest of them. 
Thus, choice B is the correct answer. Question number 19. What is the value of limit x cubed minus 8 divided by x squared minus 4 as x approaches to 2? Limit x cubed minus 8 divided by x squared minus 4 as x approaches to 2 can be written as limit x cubed minus 8 means 2 cubed divided by x squared minus 4 as x approaches to 2, which is equal to limit x minus 2 is 1 of the factor of x cubed minus 2 cubed. x cubed minus 2 cubed divided by x minus 2 is x squared plus 2x plus 4 divided by x squared minus 4 is x minus 2 times x plus 2. x minus 2 cross out by x minus 2, we left with x squared plus 2x plus 4 divided by x plus 2 as x approaches to 2. At this stage, we can plug in 2 to x because both the numerator and the denominator are defined at x is equal to 2. Thus, limit of x squared plus 2x plus 4 divided by x plus 2 is equal to 2 squared plus 2 times 2 plus 4 divided by 2 plus 2, which is equal to 2 squared is 4 plus 2 times 2 is 4 plus 4. 4 plus 4 plus 4 is 12 divided by 2 plus 2 is 4. 12 divided by 4 is 3. Hence, choice D is the correct answer. Question number 20. Among 2000 students who took a regional exam, the percentile of certain students' score is 90. Which of the following is correct about students' score? Case percentile is a score below at which a given percentage K of a score in its frequency distribution falls for exclusive definition or a score at or below which a given percentage falls for inclusive definition. For example, the 60th percentile is a data point where 60% of the entire data is less than or equal to the data point. It also means that 40% of the data is greater than or equal to the data point. Thus, choice C is the correct answer. Question number 21. Let f of x is equal to 2 times e the power of x minus k sin x plus 1. If the equation of the tangent line to the graph of f at 0, 0,3 is y is equal to 5x plus 3, then what is the value of k? The slope of the tangent line m is equal to 5. This slope is equal to the derivative of f at the point of tangency, that is f derivative at 0 is equal to m. So let's determine f derivative of x. f derivative of x is equal to 2 times the derivative of e is the power of x, that's e is the power of x, minus the constant k times the derivative of sin x. The derivative of sin x is cos x plus the derivative of 1, that is 0. Thus, f derivative of 0 is equal to 2 times e the power of 0 minus k times cos 0, which is equal to the slope of the tangent line, that is 5. 2 times e the power of 0 is 1 minus k times cos 0 is 1, which is equal to 5. This implies 2 times 1 is 2 minus k times 1 is k, which is equal to 5. This implies k is equal to 2 minus 5. 2 minus 5 is negative 3, so the correct answer is choice C. Question number 22. If a1 is equal to 2, a2 is equal to 6, a3 is equal to 10, a4 is equal to 14, then summation of a7 n ranging from 1 up to 100 is equal to blank. a1 is equal to 2, a2 is equal to 6, which is equal to 2 times 3, meaning 2 times 2 plus 1. a3 is equal to 10, which is equal to 2 times 5, which is equal to 2 times the term under operation, that is 3, plus the preceding sum, that is 2. A4 is equal to 14, which is equal to 2 times 7. That means 2 times the term under operation, that is 4, plus the preceding term, that is 3. If we follow similar pattern, A7 is equal to 2 times the n term, plus the n minus 1 term. This implies A100 is equal to 2 times the 100 term, plus 100 minus 1, that is the 99 term, which is equal to 2 times 100 plus 99 is 199. 2 times 199 is 398. If you find the difference between the consecutive terms, it is a constant 4. So the sequence is an arithmetic sequence. The sum S7 of the first 100 terms of an arithmetic sequence with the first term A1 sub and the 100th term A100 sub is given by the formula. S100 is equal to 100 over 2 times A1 plus A100. 100 over 2 is 50 times A1 is 2 plus A100 is 398, which is equal to 50 times 2 plus 398 is 400. 
50 times 400 is equal to 20,000. Therefore, choice A is the right alternative. Question number 23. The center of a circle is on y is equal to 2x and the line x is equal to 1 is tangent to the circle at 1,6. How long is the radius of a circle? Let's draw the circle. This is the xy plane. This is the vertical line x is equal to 1. This is the order pair 1,6 which lies on the vertical line x is equal to 1 and is located 6 units above the x-axis. So the circle looks like this. Let h, k is the center of a circle. To calculate the radius of the circle, let's determine the center. Since the center of the circle is on the line y is equal to 2x, then k is equal to 2h. The horizontal line drawn from the center to 1,6 is perpendicular to the vertical line x is equal to 1. Hence, the slope of the horizontal line, that's k minus 6 divided by h minus 1 is equal to 0. 0 means 0 over 1. So let's multiply crisscross. k minus 6 times 1 is k minus 6, which is equal to h minus 1 times 0 is 0. Taking negative 6 to the right of equality sign, we will find k is equal to 6. It's known that k is equal to 2h. This implies dividing both sides by 2. h is equal to k over 2, which is equal to k is 6 divided by 2. 6 over 2 is 3. So the center of the circle is 3,6. Radius is the distance from 3,6 to 1,6. That's r is equal to the square root of 3 minus 1 the whole square plus 6 minus 6 the whole square, which is equal to 3 minus 1 is 2, 2 square plus 6 minus 6 is 0, 0 square is 0, which is equal to 2 square plus 0 is 2 square, square root of 2 square becomes 2. Thus, choice A is the correct answer. Question number 24. Which of the following is a set of critical numbers of f of x is equal to 3 over 8 times x the power of 8 over 3 minus 6 times x the power of 2 over 3? Critical numbers are those numbers where f derivative of x is equal to 0 or f derivative of x doesn't exist. So let's determine f derivative of x. f derivative of x is equal to the derivative of 3 over 8 x the power of 8 over 3 is the constant 3 over 8 times the derivative of x the power of 8 over 3. Let's bring 8 over 3 to the front. That's 8 over 3 times x the power of 8 over 3 minus 1 minus the derivative of 6 x the power of 2 over 3 is the constant 6 times the derivative of x the power of 2 over 3. Let's bring 2 over 3 to the front times x the power of 2 over 3 minus 1 which is equal to 8 cross out by 8, 3 cross out by 3, we left this x the power of 8 over 3 minus 1 is 5 over 3 minus by 3 1 by 3 2 2 times 2 is 4 times x the power of 2 over 3 minus 1 means 2 over 3 minus 3 over 3 2 over 3 minus 3 over 3 is negative 1 over 3 which is equal to x the power of 5 over 3 minus 4 times x the power of negative 1 over 3 means 4 over x the power of 1 over 3 which is equal to x the power of 5 over 3 is the cube root of x to the power of 5 minus 4 over x to the power of 1 over 3 is the cube root of x. f derivative of x doesn't exist when x is equal to 0 because cube root of x is as the denominator. f derivative of x is equal to 0. This implies the cube root of x to the power of 5 minus 4 over cube root of x is equal to 0. Taking 4 over cube root of x to the right of equality, it becomes cube root of x to the power of 5 is equal to 4 over cube root of x. This implies multiply both sides by cube root of x. Then the expression becomes cube root of x to the power of 5 times cube root of x, which is equal to 4. This implies cube root of x to the power of 5 times x is equal to 4. The base is the same, so we can add the power. That's cube root of x to the power of 5 plus 1 is 6 is equal to 4. The cube root of x to the power of 6 is x squared, which is equal to 4. Taking the square root of both sides, square root of x squared is absolute value of x is equal to square root of 4 is 2. This implies x is equal to plus or minus 2. Therefore, the critical numbers are negative 2, 0, 2. Hence, choice A is the correct answer. Question number 25. If negation of P implies R is false and P by implication Q is true, then which of the following is true? Negation of P implies r is false only when negation of p is true and r is false. If negation of p is true, then p is false. p by implication q is true only when both p and q have the same truth value. 
we determine that P is false, thus Q is also false. So let's check each of the choice. P or negation of Q and R is equal to P is false or negation of Q is true and R is false, which is equal to false or true and false is false. False or false is false. So choice A is false. P by implication negation of Q or R is equal to P is false by implication negation of Q is true or negation of or R is false. This is equal to false by implication true or false is true. False by implication true is false. Negation of P implies Q or R which is equal to negation of P is true implies Q is false or R is false. This is equal to true implies false or false is false which is equal to true implies false is false. So choice C is also false. Negation of P and Q implies R is equal to negation of P is true and Q is false implies R is false which is equal to true and false implies false is true. True and true is true. Therefore the correct answer is choice D. Question number 26. A man wants to fence two identical rectangular enclosures in a field alongside a straight river as shown in the figure below. This is the figure. What is the maximum area of each enclosure that he can mix with 192 meter fencing material if the side along the river doesn't need a fence? Since the rectangular enclosures are identical, their lengths L and widths W are equal. So these are the three widths and these are the two L. The parameters of the rectangular enclosure needed to be fenced is P is equal to this 2L plus 3W which is equal to the total amount of the fencing material that's 192 meters. So let's rewrite L in terms of W. L is equal to 192 divided by 2 is 96 minus 3 over 2W. Area of enclosure A is equal to twice of L times width which is equal to 2 times L is 96 minus 3 over 2W times the width W. 2W times 96 is 192W minus 2 cross out by 2, we left with 3W square. The maximum area is achieved at A derivative with respect to W is equal to 0. The derivative of 192W is 192 minus the derivative of 3W square is 3 times 2W which is equal to 0. This implies 192 minus 3 times 2 is 6w, which is equal to 0. This implies 192. Taking negative 6 to the right of equality, it becomes positive 6w. Dividing both sides by 6, we will find 6w divided by 6 is w, which is equal to 192 divided by 6. 192 divided by 6 is 32. So let's determine L. L is equal to 96 minus 3 over 2 times W is 32, which is equal to 96 minus by 2, 1, by 2, 16. 3 times 16 is 48, which is equal to 96 minus 48 is 48. So the maximum area of each enclosure is L times W, which is equal to 48 times 32. 48 times 32 gives 1536 meters square. Therefore, choice A is the correct answer. That's all about this installment. Subscribe, like and share this YouTube page in order to encourage me to do more. Have a nice time.